I'm going to start off by just saying it's a little windy up here on this roof, so bear with me on the noise if you get a little bit of that wind noise. Um, I'm going to get closer to the unit, so hopefully that dies down. Um, I was out here on this York package unit doing a maintenance the other day, and I was getting some error code readouts on, on this board here. I uh, should cycle back through them here in a sec. Um, but it was basically here, you can see condenser coil, sensor, um, and then basically there's a couple other sensors it also was talking about. Um, one of them is also the, the ambient outdoor temperature sensor, uh, which you can see right here. Um, this is actually the condenser coil sensor as well. Um, with that being said, uh, basically coming back out here now to do the repair, um, I tested out the sensors by ohming them out and they were off. Um, another thing you can do actually on this ambient sensor is you can actually go through um, that board over there and you can scroll through it and it'll actually show you what the outdoor temperature is reading out and it was just way off. Um, so I do have some new parts here to put on these Yorks. Uh, our shop and some other shops that I know in the area have been running into issues on these York units with these sensors. Um, these condensing coil sensors, we've been running into a lot of issues on like the seven and a half ton models where they're just shorting out and not not working correctly and then you come out and the outdoor units are turned into a big ice ball um, and then even the, the condensing fan motor blades are hitting ice and stuff like that. That's more on the um, seven and a half ton model than it is this, this smaller um, model here. But, uh, yeah, I know that they've been trying to come up with some different things. They've kind of changed up these sensors a little bit <clears throat> um, on the condenser coil sensors. We ran into a lot less issues with these, uh, the ambient temperature sensors. Um, it's been not nearly as bad, but we definitely have still ran into some. Um, for instance, one of the ones I ran into was actually on a gas pack, and it had an outdoor sensor on it. And the outdoor sensor said it was like 200 degrees, so it actually locked the board out from putting into a call for heat. Um, that's just like one instance I found. Um, I'll show you guys here once I get these new parts put in how to like scroll through on that board, and you can actually read what the the temperature sensors are saying on some of these uh, sensors in this unit from the board. Um, you can also log in if you have like the I think it's called the gateway that you can plug into the the board and you can actually log into it and look through it from your phone and stuff like that and actually log through and do a lot of the programming. Um, I mean, you have to do that. Typically, it's easier to do that with like a fire off or install all these things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and swap these out um, and kind of keep moving forward with this. Uh, another thing actually that we did run into, I'll add, um, the tech support was telling us is I'm in a really wet climate basically rains like nine months out of the year um, and they're saying that when moisture is getting in these connections it'll actually mess with the sensors so I mean you might come out and test them one day and it says they're bad and then you know you come back on a sunny dry day everything's dried out and everything looks normal and reading out correct um, so that's just one thing to really look for if you're getting a lot of moisture um, I know these uh, condensing coil ones you can actually kind of move back to get into a drier location I usually do that on like the seven and a half tons I'll bring it all the way back into the, the blower compartment right here um, when I'm doing the wiring just to get it out of that moisture and the, the conditions basically um, but that's just something to really look for uh, try to avoid if you can at all costs just getting getting them out of the rain in the water um, the condensing coil ones on the on the seven and a half ton have a lot shorter leads and they're basically like tucked in tight to the coils here so when it actually does start to ice up and you got that um, and it goes into defrost and all the ice melts it's actually creating even more moisture getting into um, your connection which is giving more faulty readings so just a couple things to look for uh, I'll probably do another video when I do one of these seven and a half tons um, that has a sensor but we've had a lot better luck with these new sensors with these yellow leads have just been a lot less faulty and working a lot better for us um, compared to the original factory ones that we were getting. Something I just wanted to add here is um, on these new condenser coil sensors, they come with these new clips. Uh, the clips they used to use on these when they started coming out, 
uh, probably two, three years ago. We're actually pinching something inside the little sensing bulb up top, and that was one of the issues I do know they were running into. So these new clips, definitely make sure you're using a new clip. Uh, if for some reason you don't have a clip in there, do not use that old clip style. Um, it just it's basically going to cause another premature failure. Um, if you don't have that clip, what you could try to do is use a zip tie, but you got to be really careful with that too. I know we were told if you're using zip ties, if you really crank down on that zip tie, you're going to do the same thing and probably pinch this little sensing bulb in the end of this uh, sensor. So just something I wanted to add that I know that's something that tech support had told us uh, when we were running into the issue really bad when we first started putting these things in. Um, so just, yeah, make sure. And then also when you're putting it on, make sure you're getting that bulb on the copper, not on this old insulation. Um, I'll be putting this back on here and then rewrapping it with the insulation. Um, definitely make sure your bulb is insulated uh, with some insu foam insulation. Um, I usually softly put a zip tie around the outside of this uh, foam insulation, just kind of somewhat hold it in place. I mean, I really don't crank down on it by any means. It's just kind of softly on there. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to add that about the, these little brackets that come with uh, the sensors. So here I just wanted to show, I got this ambient temperature sensor in here. Um, basically this little metal bracket, where you take these two screws out, comes out, and this will just slide. You gotta pinch a little couple barbs on this sensor and it will slide off the metal bracket. You reuse this metal bracket. Um, <clears throat> so I got that in there. Um, just make sure when you're hooking this back up, you get this ground wire. This is going to my crankcase heater on the compressor. So just make sure you get your ground wire hooked back up. Um, so. My leads on this ambient sensor is only like six inches, so I kind of just left it, left it out here um, where it was. Um, but the new condensing coil sensors are huge, huge leads on these now. So I actually brought it out of the the outdoor environment where it can get wet and moisture in it, um, and I actually brought it back into the the blower compartment here. And I just made my connection. My connections right here uh, that way I don't have to worry about any moisture or anything messing with my sensors um, like I said it's just kind of the Pacific Northwest area it's just a lot of rain up here and just moisture and then obviously when these things like I said are going into defrost um, just too much moisture uh, so I just want to get it out of that environment altogether so this should really I, I honestly don't think this will fail it every one of these I brought out of the outdoor environment and brought them into more sealed dry compartments I honestly haven't had any failures with them after that. Um, that's just me personally. I mean, I'm sure people still are, some here and there, but I mean, um, I'm not. So I just kind of wanted to show you that. Um, I definitely recommend just zip tying everything, making everything kind of look as good as you can. Um, just, yeah, like I said, add the zip ties. Uh, here's that zip tie added around the insulation. Like I said, it's not even that tight. I mean, you can see I can wiggle this thing. It's not on there that tight at all. It's really just to kind of keep the insulation in spot. Um, but yeah, that's that, and uh, next I'll go over to the board and kind of show you how to uh, uh, look up like the outdoor temperature sensors and stuff like that. Um, also, without goes without saying, I usually say this in all the videos, is when you're doing any of these wiring or anything with electrical, just you know, kill power to the unit. So I shut mine off at the at the disconnect up here on the roof uh, while I was doing all my repairs. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on here so I can. Uh, see what the board's saying. So typically when you fire these things back up, it goes into like a reboot thing. It takes a couple, yeah, what was that, 120 seconds or so. So it'll do a countdown here. Once I get this countdown, um, I'll show you how to get into the, the um, outdoor temperature sensor basically here on the control board um, I'm gonna go to right at the get-go status and there's a little enter button here I'm gonna hit enter and then um, it's gonna switch the screen I'm gonna keep scrolling down and right here you're gonna see supplier temp I'm gonna hit enter so it's gonna show you my supplier temp uh, reading my return air temp reading, and then the outside air temp sensor reading. Um, 
this is the sensor I just replaced and now it's definitely showing a, a correct readout of what the temperature is right now. Um, like I said before, it was just way off. It was probably 20 degrees off or something like that. So it was just, you could tell it was really funky. So that's why I did the outside air temp sensor. Um, my condensing coil sensor I knew was for sure bad, but uh, just off of readings. And also it was a huge block of ice when I showed up. And then my readings were terrible when I was homing it out. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show um, how to get to that temperature so you can kind of see it. So the wind's starting to pick up a little bit more up here, so I'm going to try to wrap this up, but uh, I was going to let you know, if you end up doing some sensors and you keep getting a bunch of sensor readouts uh, on your control board saying that, you know, the sensors are still bad, this or that, a lot of times it's not, obviously you don't, you're not putting in like a bad new sensor or something like that, it's just um, these boards need updated every so often, um, so you have to actually do like software updates and you can plug in right here. So you actually like download um, a software update, uh, like a little key fob, and then you can plug it in right here, and uh, you can kind of go through it and do an update. I'll try to do a video of that one day when I'm doing an update on one of these, but if you start getting a lot of just funky readouts and stuff like that, um, after you do boards or sensors, stuff like that, typically it's an update thing. Uh, I know a lot of boards get misdiagnosed and people put in a new board when it's really not the board, it's actually just needs a software update. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind if you're still running to like sensors. I know some of them like say like humidity sensor and stuff like that. It's not even in the particular unit you're working on. So that's kind of a good indication uh, when you start getting stuff like that. Um, just to add, I mean, I usually write on the unit with a Sharpie inside, just kind of stating what was done. Just because, you know, if you're starting to run into an issue where you're doing sensors, you know, every year, if you have different texts coming out and, you know, communication isn't getting relayed to one another. Um, you just want to know if you're having a consistent problem and also it's just as a service tech it's always nice knowing what's been done on a system. Uh, that's pretty much everything I can think on this York unit. Um, been wanting to put a video together of this just because I know it was something when we first ran into it, it would have been nice to find a video because um, we were all drawing a blank when it all first started happening with these sensors on these, these units. Um, if you like the video, please give it a, a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys. I was just going to add it for anyone who wants the model number and serial number on this York package unit. The model number is XN036C00A1C1AAA1A1A. And then the serial here is at N1B74681. Um, so yeah, here's that extra information for anyone who wanted it.